guys, welcome back to Wong Chemistry channel. This is the part 2 video of your 5.3 solid. And in this video, we are going to discuss about the types of solid. There are two different types of solid that we are going to discuss in this video. Your crystalline solid and your amorphous solid. Okay? So what makes your crystalline solid and your amorphous solid different? Let's see one by one. Your crystalline solid will have a very well-defined shape. Well-defined shape means you will have a very regular arrangement. Your arrangement is the same, all right? All the arrangement is the same repeated. Therefore, your 3D geometrical patterns will be keep repeating because it's a well-defined regular arrangement. Therefore, you will have a 3D geometry repeating. Something like this. You can see over here, the geometry over here is the same. You are basically repeating the all the geometries over here. So that is what we call crystalline solid. Okay? Crystalline solid form when the saturated liquid will cool very slowly. Alright? When your saturated liquid having the cooling process very slowly, then you will be forming your crystalline solid. Okay? And because of this regular arrangement and a well-defined shape, Therefore, your crystalline solid will have a definite melting point. The melting point will be very definite because of the regular arrangement and the well-defined shape. Okay? Next, how about amorphous solid? First and foremost, it does not have a well-defined shape. The shape will not be well-defined. Therefore, you will have an irregular arrangement. The arrangement won't be repeated. The arrangement will be different every single time. Okay, that is your irregular arrangement. And as we say, when it's an irregular arrangement, you won't repeat the geometric pattern. The geometric pattern will repeat means it looks something like this. You can see over here the arrangement of this and the arrangement of this is different. Can you see that? The arrangement of this is different. So, you will have a very irregular arrangement in the amorphous solid and also the geometry will not be repeated, okay? And how do we form the amorphous solid? This solid will be formed when your saturated liquid is cold very rapidly, very fast. When you have the same saturated liquid, one, you cool it extremely slow and steady. Then you will form your crystalline solid. One more, you cool it rapidly. You cool it in a very fast pace. Then you will have an irregular arrangement, a not well-defined shape of your amorphous solid. And because of that irregular arrangement and a not well-defined shape, you will then have a no definite melting point. Means that your melting point might change, depends on the type of solid that you have. So that is the differences between your crystalline solid and your amorphous solid. Okay? Example of your crystalline solid, your ice, your sugar, your salt, your copper sulfate, your crystal, all that is your crystalline solid. Your amorphous solid, your glass, your plastic, your charcoal. So all this produce very fast, very rapidly. So very rapidly means that your saturated liquid is cooling down very, very fast. Okay, next we want to focus on crystalline solid only. We have four different types of crystalline solid that I want you to look at. The first one, your metallic solid, your ionic solid, your gigantic covalent structure, what is actually gigantic covalent structure. Next, and last but not least, molecular covalent solid. So we have four different types of crystalline solid that I want you to look at, okay? First and foremost, let's look at your metallic solid. So your metallic solid having metallic bond. Remember your electron C model that is in your metallic bond, okay? And obviously between the metallic solid, you're having metallic bond. And who will be having metallic bond? Obviously your metal. And the metal that we have is always in atom, okay? And the example of atom that we have is your sodium, your aurium, your gold, your calcium, your magnesium. So that is all the example of metal that we have. So make sure you know in the metallic solid, what is the type of the bonding? What is the type of the particles? And definitely a few examples. That's it. You need to know about it. Okay. 
Next, we have ionic solid. Obviously, in the ionic solid, we will be having ionic bond. Very simple. And in the ionic bond, what would be your type of particles? Ionic bond definitely is between positive and negative. So, the type of particles that we have, your cation and also your anion. Simple. And the example of ionic solid that I can give to you, sodium chloride, potassium nitrate, copper sulfate, your magnesium chloride, all that is your ionic solid. Okay? And you can see over here the presence of your cation and your anion. That is where you have your ionic bond, the attractive forces between the cation and the anion. Same thing, you have your K plus and you have your NO3 minus. Okay? That is your NO3 minus. And then you have your K plus. Again, that is our ionic bond. See that? So, ionic solid definitely involve ionic bond. Definitely having cation and ion. Simple. Okay? So, next, gigantic covalent structure. Talking about covalent, what type of bond do you think you have? We definitely have covalent bond. Okay? And in this gigantic covalent structure, your atom will be connected in a network of covalent. All of them are only having covalent bond. All this is only your covalent bond, alright? But this covalent bond right now is connected to a gigantic network. So even though covalent bond is not the strongest force of attraction that you can have, but it's connected to a huge network. So when you have a covalent bond, but in a gigantic covalent structure, you will have an extremely high melting point, okay? So, the example that I have over here, your diamond, your graphite, your quartz. So, this is the example of your diamond. You can see over here right now, your diamond is connected to a gigantic covalent network. It's huge. You are connected everywhere. Same goes to your graphite over here. Looking at your graphite, you can see that your graphite is also connected to a giant covalent network, okay? So the melting point for them will be extremely high due to the gigantic covalent structure, all right? And last but not least, molecular covalent solid. So in molecular covalent solid, we have Van der Waal forces, okay? And your molecular covalent solid can exist in atoms or molecule, depends on what you are having. For example, your sugar, your P4 phosphorus, your sulfur A, and your iodine. That is your P4, okay? That is your phosphorus, 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 phosphorus. That is your P4, okay? And your S8, you can see over here, S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, 6, 7, 8. That is your molecular covalent solid look like for your P4 and also your S8, okay? And that's it about type of solid. If you have any question regarding types of solid that I can help, drop it in the comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching and make sure you like the video, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you again in the next video. Pocket.com